back at it again. We've got to talk about Stephen A. Smith and Charlemagne. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna drop the the last two parts of his name. Uh I've said that the, those parts enough. You guys know who he is. All right. Uh but we gotta talk about Stephen A. Smith, you know, the the anchor from ESPN. He had the famous show, or actually I think he still has the show, uh first take uh on ESPN, the the sports uh, analyst, whatever you want to call it, and then Charlemagne, who's the radio host. Okay, uh, they recently had a conversation on Stephen A's podcast that I want to discuss with you guys because, oh man, yeah, they said some terrible stuff once again. But we're gonna address it. We're gonna address it. We're not gonna let them say this stuff without it being uh, corrected, right? Because you know the left loves trying to correct us. So it's only right we return the favor, right? Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And let's dive in. What are your thoughts about black conservatives? Um, and I say that black conservatives as in black conservatism as opposed to the MAGA Republicans. I'm not trying yes. to. I'm just talking black conservatives. What are your thoughts about that? I don't, I don't have a problem with uh, black conservatives. I do have a problem with black MAGA because it feels like MAGA is so against the basic interest of black people. That's why even when, you know, President Biden was on Breakfast Club and he said, if you don't know whether to vote... Forget your feelings. See, that's the problem. Did y'all did y'all catch that? He said, because it feels like MAGA. With uh, black conservatives. I do have a problem with black MAGA because it feels like MAGA... Because it feels. That's the problem. You're using feelings. Don't use feelings. F your feelings. <laughs> F your feelings. I don't care about feelings, and none of us should care about feelings. What is the reality of the situation? And it ain't what you're talking about. It, ain't, it isn't what you're describing. MAGA isn't against us, okay? Uh, forget what your feelings say. But anyway, continue. It is so against the basic interest of black people. That's why even when, you know, President Biden was on Breakfast Club and he said, if you don't know whether to vote for me or Trump, then you, it, then you, you ain't, ain't black. black. That didn't insult me because I understood what he was saying. It like, bothered me though. Really? You know why it bothered me? And it, all, it also, it's also interesting how, you know, people like Charlemagne always come up with every excuse in the book. Every, every excuse in the book for someone like Joe Biden. But if Trump had said those exact same words, those exact same words, It'd be a major problem. It'd be a huge issue. Uh, people like Charlemagne would be offended, and they they talk about it for days. Mainstream media would run it for days and on on end. They they never let us forget that Trump said those words. But because it was Joe Biden, it's okay. Because it's Joe Biden, it's okay to call black kids roaches, as long as it's Joe Biden that's saying it. As long as it's Joe Biden that's calling LL Cool J boy, it's okay. It's okay. See, I, I would have no issues, once again, because I want to make this clear. I would have no issue with any of these folks going after Trump, you know, uh, uh, analyzing, critiquing, you know, picking out words out of everything that he said if they did it to Joe Biden too. But they don't. That's the problem. I, I, I can literally recite uh, uh, moments of Joe Biden being racist, blatant, blatantly. And nobody says anything about it. Now, Stephen A is about to mention that he had a little bit of a problem with Joe Biden, you know, uh, saying, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. But he's like one of the only people, one of the only people. And even still, he gives an excuse. Like, he's still voting for the guy. Like, I would have no issue if they treated both people the same. But they don't. And that's where the problem is. But let's continue. Because he was talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're a brother that has tackled so many issues and nobody's perfect and nobody's flawless, but you've done a hell of a lot more good than, than anyone could ever, than anyone has ever given you credit for as far as I'm concerned. And I respect the hell out of you because of it. It bothered me that he said that to you mm -hmm. because I'm like, who the hell are you? 
to say something <laughs> like that. Now, I, I, I wouldn't think about what he said as much as him of all people mm -hmm. saying it because we just remove it. If we can hold Trump and, you know, as a landlord and as, a, you know, as an owner, as a homeowner, I was as a landlord more so than anything else in the 70s, if we could hold those things against him, if we could hold the Central Park Five against him, all right, we can certainly hold stuff against Biden from the 90s in the crime oh, bill. Oh, absolutely. And so for 100%. him to be in 2020 saying that to you, trying to absolve himself from all that he did and like, yo, this ain't the dude you want. You want me, and if you don't know better, you ain't black. That bothered me. And I, and I think that he, we got to that statement because of 17 minutes of intense questioning about that, yeah, fair. Ab, 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 about his record. And I think he was just, you know, flustered. Listen, I don't like making excuses for white people. You know what I mean? But this you just did, though. You just did. Just in that moment, right. I, I felt like he was simply saying, if you don't know whether, if you vote for Trump, you're voting against your, your own interest. So right. I just think when it comes to MAGA right. in general, you're voting against your own interest. But I don't have a problem with tried and true black conservatives, especially when you have conversations with them and you see why they decided they wanted to, you know, vote Republican. It's literally just all about the money. Most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time, it's literally just about the money. That's why I go back to what I said about Nikki Haley. I feel like Republicans missed a good opportunity to have somebody in a general election who could probably get votes from both sides just because people want something different. I don't think, I think there's a, there's a lot of black people, especially probably down south, who might have more conservative values than they, than they, than they lead on, you know? And I, and I think that she might have been able to galvanize some of those people. Election is eight months away. Mm -hmm. What is Charlemagne the God gonna be saying over the next also, to address the Nikki Haley thing, Nikki Haley was never a Republican. Never. And no, Charlemagne, she she had basically no support in the Republican Party. Almost all of her support, not all, it was uh, closer to like half, I, I, I believe, according to the poll at least, uh, were Democrats. Democrats. Who, and a lot of them had said, um, no, I just wanted to try to get rid of Donald Trump. Like, they, they weren't actually supporting Nikki Haley. They just wanted to try to stick one to Donald Trump and, of course, failed miserably. Uh, so, good luck with that one. This train is not stopping. It is, it is, steam, it is rolling down those tracks and you're going to have a real hard time stopping that thing because, as we know, trains don't stop very easily, okay? You're not bringing that thing to an instant halt. Uh, but, yeah, Nikki Haley was never a Republican, and real Republicans understood that. And my question to you, Charlemagne, would be, what's wrong with MAGA? Like, what, what's, what's so different from MAGA and Republicans or black Republicans that want to vote Republican for the almighty dollar that you said? It's all about them, which, hey, listen, that is one big reason why. Let's keep it, let's keep it a buck, right? Because uh, since we keep it at a buck, this buck, <laughs> what can you buy these days with just this? Can you buy anything? Legitimately, can you buy anything these days with just one dollar? One dollar. Can you? I remember, I remember uh, uh, we had this little uh, spot that we all used to go to that, that sold candy. And they used to sell like these, uh, like these little uh, bags, like sandwich bags. They would tie and be full of candy, like, like a little bag, probably, probably yay big. Man, <laughs> we would go up in there with our dollar. <laughs> Be so geeked to have some candy. Oh man, this dollar ain't getting you nothing. Not a single thing. Not a single thing. You might find something that is a dollar, but because it is a dollar, there's tax. Uncle Sam gotta get his too, right? Uncle Sam gotta get his. So th th this ain't gonna get you anywhere. But um, hopefully, uh, in Trump's economy, we we might get a, a few things back, right? <laughs> Maybe we'll get our 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 our, our um, dollar back of candy back, right? Where where it was just a dollar, all we had, hey, lay the dollar on the table, we can leave, 
taxes are covered, everything's good, all right, and we can get our little bag of candy, um, maybe, we'll see. Nothing. People just want to feel safe. Whoever is in that White House, whoever your your your, your governor is, or you know your 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 your, your, your senators, all that, we want people in those positions who can make sure that we got some money in our pocket and can make us feel safe. So you know what they're gonna say. They're and you know who will do that? Uncle Trump. Uncle Trump. I'm just saying that that that's just facts. I mean, you look at the polling. There's polls out there that that have asked people some of those questions. And they all say, Trump. They're going to say with Trump, it was the economy. And national security was not something that he was shy about promoting as well. So if you got those two elements, that's about money in your pocket. That's, right. that's about safety. And they'll lean on that. And they say that makes him a better candidate than Joe Biden. Man, do you know, you know back in January, right, I was doing an interview with Fox News. Uh, Joseph, who does the digital, uh, digital stuff at Fox News. And he asked me a simple question. He said, Charlamagne, do you think... Um, the border is going to be an issue come November. And I said, hell, yeah. hell yes. And the reason I said hell yes is because for the first time in my community, people are talking to me about what's happening at the border. Not because they're anti, right. you know, uh, immigrants. They're not xenophobic. No. Yeah, right. What they were talking about is the fact that they felt like those individuals were getting resources we, we that get the it. black community has never gotten. Eric Adams, and, not his fault, Governor Oakland, but 53 million. Actually, it is Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul's fault. If they said no to illegal immigrants, you wouldn't have the problem. You wouldn't have the issue. But no. They encourage it. They encourage it. And then point the finger at uh, uh, um, Governor of Texas, Greg Abbott. Point the finger at Greg Abbott. Hey, it's your fault. Oh, so what? Greg Abbott was supposed to deal with all of this by himself? That's it? Like, he just he just was supposed to take the brunt of your illegal immigration? He wants to close the border. Biden tried to stop him from closing the border. And he's supposed to, he's supposed to deal with the problem that he doesn't want in the first place. You guys want it. You asked for it. So he said, you know what? Well, if you want them, you take them. And now all of a sudden... Is Greg Abbott's fault? Video coming soon. Y'all just stay tuned. I got a whole separate video that I'm, I'm going to release on that whole situation. But anyway, let's continue on. Million dollar prepaid credit cards Come on. for un undocumented or illegal Come immigrants. On, man. But when was that, when was that happening Come for on. black people? And, 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 and th th those are just basic necessities, yes. right? Food and a roof over your head. There is some people in this. There's a lot of people in this country who don't have that so if you think that they're going to look at you know these people coming in from other countries and they're getting they're getting re rewarded with those things and they don't have it you think they're not going to raise hell mm -hmm. you think they're not going to ha have a fit then i had people coming to me in new york city talking to me about how you know gangs from different countries were coming in and running through their neighborhoods like causing problems so what are we talking about again money and safety. So these are real conversations that I was having with real people. This ain't nothing I was reading, wasn't no statistics. These are people calling the phone lines and people that I'm actually talking to. So I said that. And do you know, they ran an article, they ran an article on MSNBC that said, Charlemagne the God is pushing MAGA messaging. Yeah. Now- They've done it to me about three times. Now, now, They've done it to me about three times. Now in March, it's the number one issue, the border. That's right. Now you got President Biden, you know, down at the border, Asking Donald Trump, let's fix this together. Right. It's like, yo, just listen to the people. And Donald Trump is 300 miles away at the border blaming Biden you know what for saying? what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Which is also interesting because, Biden, why are you asking Trump to fix the issue? Let's fix this together. <laughs> isn't, isn't it funny how Joe Biden plays this, oh, I'm going to be the uniter in chief. Oh, Trump, let's fix it together. And then, like, a situation like the State of the Union, like, he's all all divisive and my predecessor. <laughs> Hold on. Are, 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 are you the uniter in chief or are you the divider in chief? Because, like, you, you play in this, uh, 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 what's it called? Heckle and Jekyll? Like the, the, the flip flop, like you, you, you flip flopping. 
every two seconds. When it ben- when it benefits you, you play one side. When it doesn't, you play the other side. You know, and it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. But that that just comes from me listening to people. Mm-hmm. I really think sometimes, man, we sit in our positions of privilege and we forget about you know the the least of us in this country. But when you talk to the least of us in this country and see what the least of us in this country want, you get a really good picture of what America needs. Have you ever been more worried about the black community than you are right now? And when you talk to some of these folks, like the folks in Chicago, Charlemagne, where uh, Democrats have run Chicago since, what, 1930s, I believe it is, I saw I saw a thing of it earlier. I think it's been since 1931. I think is the exact year that the, the last time a Republican was the mayor of Chicago, you know, actually had the reins over Chicago. 31, 1931. Yeah. Almost 100 years ago. Almost a century. Insane, right? How's that going? How's that going? <laughs> How's that going? Okay, and, and, and you you look at all of these big cities that are that are uh, um, being run by these Democrats, and they're all going to crap. They're all going to crap. The one big city that, uh, or the last one that I could think of that was run by a Republican, Rudy Giuliani, right? Um. Was, was pretty okay, right? Pretty okay, right? People said the crime was down, right? Rudy Giuliani did 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 an okay job, didn't he? New York. Just saying, I'm just saying, just saying. But then also, you know, uh, once again, if you look at these places like Chicago, um, these black folks are being replaced. And that is your fault, Charlemagne. That is your fault, Stephen A. You're supposed to be the leaders, right? Because you have all of this influence. And y'all keep peddling the same tired old message. Same tired old message. Oh, Joe Biden ain't great, but Trump is worse. Republicans are worse. Are they really, though? Because where has that gotten? Anybody continuing to vote Democrat. Where's it gotten anyone? Not very far. Not very far. Now, I got this last clip that I want to show y'all because Stephen A actually says it out loud. And I, I, I was shocked when he said this. Absolutely shocked when Stephen A uttered these words. The experts, you want to put folks in a position where real stuff can actually get done. Real dialogue can take place, real stuff can get done. I remember I was getting crucified, man, and, and, and Joe Madison, God rest his soul, passed away. Uh, the Black Eagle uh, hosted Sirius XM. Yeah, 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 man, absolutely. I remember years ago he called me because I was giving a speech at Vanderbilt. And one of the things that I would, I would normally say when I was giving these speeches is I said, for one election, I wish everyone would vote Republican. And they were like, what? You know, because I started off by saying racism doesn't exist. And then I would pause and I would say, obviously, I'm lying. Of course it does. You just don't have that as an excuse for stymieing your growth and moving Mm -hmm. forward and and progressing. They would cut out the part where I said, obviously, I'm lying. Of course it exists. And just said, Stephen A said racism doesn't exist. You know, and luckily I have my own platform, so I don't worry about making sure the voice gets heard. But in the end, I'm bringing that up because I think it's important to point this out. The only point that I was trying to make when I say stuff like that is flatter us. We go in situations, we let you give us lip service during election year, tell us what we've let this happen for decades, and then nothing gets done. When you look at the Hispanic population and the one benefit one could argue about immigration being such a fervent issue is that it's in the mind's eye of politicians. So you have to at least come across like you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Whereas with us, Nobody had to do that. I said, you go to the car, you don't just buy it, you test drive it. That's right. You got a house, you walk through it, you see it. What's up? You don't just sit up there and transparently give your, give somebody your vote because you serve to disenfranchise yourself. On one hand, you got one side that knows you ain't going to never support them, so they don't have to do a damn thing for you. And on the other side, they get to take you for granted. So there's but so much they're going to do for you. And I think that's how we've hurt ourselves. That's the position that I've always taken. What about you? What you said is interesting. Yo, 
Yeah, fam, how many times have I said that? How many times have I said that? Yo, what are we doing? Like, it's, it's obvious what is happening here. It is obvious. It's as plain as day. And Stephen A just clearly said it. And you know who he's still going to vote for? The same Democrats he's always voted for. He literally just told you what one of the major problems is. When all you do is vote one party your entire existence, where is the incentive for the Democrat Party to do anything for you? There isn't. There isn't. He just said it. He just... <laughs> this, this, this is just mind but Bro, there, there has to be a book wrote, written about the psychology of these folks, man. There has to be. There has to be. The, 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 the psychology of people like Stephen A. and other black people who continually push this narrative of we can only vote Democrat and that is the only way to go. That is the, that is the only thing. And, 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 and even some black folks go, go as far as calling black folks like me, you know, Uncle T or, you know, all types of other names that I, I'm, I'm not going to mention here. Just, just all types of stuff. And it's just like, oh my goodness. Like y'all, y'all don't see what's happening. <laughs> goodness gracious. But Stephen A clearly sees it. And yet he's still going to do what he's saying we shouldn't do. <laughs> oh, man. Where is the incentive for Democrats to do anything for you if they know that you're only going to vote for them and you only have ever voted for them and under any no circumstances will you ever vote Republican? Where is the incentive for Democrats to do anything for you? There isn't. And I've brought up the employer uh, uh, analogy before. You know, if, if your employer told you they're never going to fire you under any circumstances, you will never be fired. You, eventually, you're going to start showing up late. You're going to start leaving early. Even when you do show up on time, you're going to start half-assing it. You know, you're not going to really work because you know you're never going to get fired. It's the same thing. It's simple. Like, is that common sense, y'all? Am I tripping? Is, is that not really common sense? And, I, and I'm just like, I'm just expecting too much of folks. I mean, seriously, be honest with me. Because to me, like, it's common sense. Like, it's as clear as day. Like, to me, like, you'd have to be as blind as a bat to not see that. I'd be the first to admit I ain't been in politics for very long. And that's clear to me. Like, that's obvious. But should I lower my standards a little bit? Like, it is that not so common sense y'all y'all let me know in the comment section because it's, it's stuff like that that, that 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 drives me crazy you said it you said it and then you're still gonna go against it don't make sense anyway y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below like share comment hit that subscribe button before you go peace and love i'm out